Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Chaz here, the Lab Coat Zone back order, and it's time for episode number eight of the Pokemon Sapphire playthrough. Before I get any further into this, I wanted to point out that you might hear from my voice, I'm not sure, but I'm feeling very sick. I caught a cold at the start of the weekend, and I might have seemed okay during the Pokemon Stadium episodes. Those were pre-recorded on Thursday, so therefore I seemed fine, but the entire weekend I've just been hit with a bad cold. Might be the change in the season, perhaps. I don't know what exactly it is, but initially I was considering holding off on doing any sort of con you know, considerable content for the channel, just giving you a quick update, letting you know that eh, I'm not feeling that well, I'll come back later in the week, but uh, I was going to spend the day just resting up. As it turns out, because of my cold, I really can't get much sleep. So I thought, you know what, I feel okay enough to try for a half hour episode of Sapphire. So we are here, we're going to try and continue our adventure in the Hoenn region. I am concerned that the lack of sleep I got last night, plus my head is on a slightly foggy level, I'm concerned I might make a misplay, and I don't know. I'm hoping it's not going to happen, but if tradition holds true, it's not till episode 10 of a Nuzlocke-ish style playthrough that I have to worry about that. So, talking about Pokemon Silver, of course. Anyway, in the last episode of Sapphire, we went here in Duford Town and checked out some of the sites, went in and took on the Gym Leader Brawly and got our second badge, the Knuckle Badge, here in the Hoenn region, and then I decided I want to add a Fighting-type Pokemon to my own team based on how well we saw it perform on Brawly's side. That is a complete lie, the Pokemon in question was pretty much dispatched easily with two hits, but I still wanted to add a Pokemon anyway. So, let's do a team recap and see who we are working with here in the Hoenn region right now. Our current team... We have Burrow the Ninkeda at level 17, leading off with the Compound Eyes ability. It's going to raise the accuracy of some of his moves. Lonely Nature, which is a boost to attack while lowering defense, I believe. And he's holding Silk Scarf to power up any normal type moves, which start off with Cut, of course, and end with Cut. He's also got Leech Life, Harden, and Sand Attack. Next, we have our starter here in the Hoenn region, Skippy the Marsh Stomp, with the Torrent ability, of course, boosting water moves if he gets at low HP. Lax Nature, which boosts defense while dropping special defense. And he's holding Quick Claw because his speed is only 25, it's his lowest stat, so Quick Claw could come in handy. He's got Water Gun, Mud Shot, Mud Slap, and Growl. And we have Shelbert and Pikachu on the team. I'm not really going to use them, so I'm going to skip past them for the time being. They're here for like more moral support than anything. Once the current team hits the proper level of the Pokemon that are sitting in the PC from the uh, Silver playthrough, I'm going to start bringing some of those back. But the newest member of the team is Bukemon, the Makuhita, not Hariyama, as I kept saying last time, which was massive spoilers, but forget about all that. He has the Guts ability, which will improve his attack if he has a status condition. Lonely Nature, much like Burrow, or exactly like Burrow, boosting attack while lowering defense. You'll see right there, the attack is a nice 17, only at level 9. And he's got Tackle, Focus Energy, and Sand Attack. So I'm going to lead him at the front. Now, I could, if I wanted to, do a grinding montage to get him up to speed with the rest of the team, but I only really want to do grinding montages when I'm ready to take on a gym and just before I go into the gym itself. So I'm going to hold off on doing that until we hit the next gym. I'm going to do some Switch training for Pokemon today. Have we dealt with all the trainers yet? We have. Okay, or at least that one. Now, I seem to recall there's a hidden item. A Pokeball. Replace the one that we used to capture Bukemon. So what we have to do now is head into Granite Cave. Now that we have the badge from the Duford City Gym, or Duford Town Gym, we can use Flash outside of battle, and Pikachu, being our Flash user, is going to get us through this cave. First of all, let's deal with this Abra as we tackle it away. Never mind. Of course it's going to teleport away. So, I've been considering some things for the Sun and Moon playthrough. I will sort of reiterate this in the news update video. Oh, I didn't mention that. I'm going to hold off on the news update video thingy until at least tomorrow, possibly even later in the week because of where I'm not feeling very good. I want to be able to have time to research all the information that I need and hopefully not tire myself out from too much talking and all that. We got an escape rope. That could be very handy for getting out of here in a quick jump with the item. But let's jump down here and use flash. Go ahead, Pikachu. Blind everybody! Watch how much this lights up the area. It just makes the circle bigger. <clears throat> but anyway, so I'm going to hold off on the news update thing, but I will mention again in the news update some ideas I have for the Pokemon Moon playthrough. Some concerns I have as well, but I'm going to hold off on those. Well, you know what? You're not going to stay in here, Pokemon. Let's go into Burrow, who needs the experience a little bit more. So I've decided if I can manage to pull this off, I want to get five episodes of Pokemon Moon recorded on release day weekend, or release weekend, whatever you want to call it, because... With the, uh, the fact that Moon is set 12 hours apart from Sun, or 12 hours apart from, like, you know, real time, 
I'm thinking I want to try and get recordings done at various times of the day. So I'm thinking if I can pick up the game quickly enough and get it home to record, I'm going to do a, say, a 12 o'clock episode, so, uh, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, just kind of stagger them that way. And one of the episodes I do want to do is stay up till 3 in the morning, record one of the half-hour episodes then, and then have that uploaded for a 3, af- or three in the afternoon in-game episode, just to show off as much of the different scenery at different times of day as I can. So hopefully I can get all that stuff recorded on release day weekend, because I want to sort of get to uh, like something that hasn't really been bothering me per se, but something that I do notice with this playthrough here of Sapphire is... Back with Silver, I was having episode 1 through 5 on 5 days of the week. I was having episode 6 through 10 on the other week, you know, like that, so like they were going in perfect numbers of 5. Not to say that I'm OCD or anything, but the fact that Sapphire right now is like episodes 3 through 7 were one week, now 8 through 12 are going to be this week, it just seems kind of weird, kind of off, so my idea is, first of all, I know that when I get Sun and Moon, or Moon, I'm going to be so focused on playing the game that I just want to play it to experience it, I'm not going to be able to uh, withstand not playing until the next week. So, just to sort of get us on a schedule of getting five episodes per week, like say episodes one through five, my thought is I'll record five episodes on the first day, upload two on Friday, two on Saturday, then one on Sunday. That way we'll have the first five episodes done. I think that's probably a good idea because a lot of people are going to be like maybe streaming the game and getting all their playthroughs out as fast as they <coughs> excuse me as fast as they can. So if I can somewhat stay on par, then that'll be cool. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to. People are going to be like just breezing through the game as fast as they can to see everything. So that's going to be one of the hard parts for me as a content creator, not watching anyone else's playthrough of either game until I've completed it, because I don't want to be spoiled. I want my reactions in the game to be genuine and fresh, despite all the uh, the spoilerific trailer stuff they've been giving us. Boot game on his level 10. And finally got a fighting type move! Yes! I mean, finally meaning after one level. But still, he's got a stab move now. But, those are my ideas for the Moon playthrough. Try to get five episodes for the first weekend and stagger them throughout the day and basically have all the videos recorded in advance, and that way I don't have to worry about uh, recording throughout the weekend, right? I have five episodes ready to go, I'll stagger them out as we go. Now, since we have Arm Thrust, can Bukemon take this on himself? Now, this could be the mistake that I probably shouldn't be doing, but I think we can do this. Much slap, I'm going to reduce our accuracy. I'm not very powerful, though. There we go, so it's double super effective. There we go, Bukemon's first win! The Makuhita pulling through. So, talking about Sun and Moon, I'm still trying to decide, like, I don't want to... Wow. That was a good experience. I don't want to make a full team already. I kind of want to let some things decide for me. Everstone! That prevents evolution for Pokemon. Now, I'm not going to use it just yet. I could, you know what, just for the heck of it. Since we've had to mash the B button, so many times throughout all the different playthroughs. We're going to let Shelbert hold on to that. Because as I've said many times, Shelbert is my Squirtle who is never going to be evolving up into the higher forms. So I like him as a Squirtle. Uh, where do we go from here? I think there's only one way to go. So, I don't want to know exactly which Pokemon to choose for my team just yet. <clears throat> but I have said I am deciding what types to add to the team. <coughs> Pardon me as my throat is very scratchy. I should have got some water before doing this. I think Pokemon can take this, um, but I've decided on what types to add to the team, and I am strongly considering the fact that, like, I've got a little list over here, you can't really see it on the camera, but I've looked at the types that I have in my collection, the types that I have a lot of and don't have many of. For example, as far as my whole collection and all the games, the generations go, water and flying are the most plentiful, so I'm probably going to try to stay away from those. Of course, spoilers, I am a water starter through and through, so I'm going to be choosing Poplio for my lead Pokemon. But, as far as other Pokemon are concerned, I'm going to sort of be choosing other types I don't have a lot of. Steel types. I've only got one Steel type in my overall collection, currently in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, from my main team. There have been other things like, you know, legendary giveaways and other things from the online competitions. I don't consider them part of the main team exactly, so I'm not going to be really focusing on using them. But, I have one Steel type, <coughs> two Ice type, two Dark, and two Ghost. And Rock, Fire, Grass, Psychic, and Dragon, I've only got three types of in my overall collection. Why'd you gotta hit yourself? Ooh, that was painful. Let's go ahead and switch into Burrow. We do have some potions to heal up after this fight, which is good. So, 
I am considering the fact that I only have a few grass and dragon types. As weird as it looks, and as much as people sort of poke fun at it, I'm really considering adding a Lolan Executor to the team. So, spoilers, you know, if I do decide to do that. Grass and Dragon, now as somebody said to me, you want to watch out for those Ice-type attacks, they might make you reconsider, but I'm like, you know what? No, I got another Pokemon I'm considering, an Ice-Steel-type, you might know who I'm talking about, and I've decided I'm going to be adding them to the team as well, therefore, if I do see an Ice-type going up against my Alolan Executor, I can switch out to that double-resistant Pokemon, right? I do have an idea for Eviolite as well on that Pokemon. But before I continue, we've met this person here. That device you have there, it's a Pokenav. When trainers have when trainers that have Pokenavs battle, it keeps a record of how things went, I think. Oh, pardon me. My name is Steven. I'm interested in rare stones, so I travel here and there. Oh, a letter for me. Here you go, Steven. It's like I just gave him a badge. Why is that badge music playing? Okay, thank you. You went through all this trouble to deliver that. I need to thank you. Let me see. I'll give you this TM. It contains my favorite move, Steel Wing. Can't use that yet. Of course, I do have Pokemon in the PC I could use that on, though. Your Pokemon appear quite capable. If you keep training, you could even become the champion of the Pokemon League one day. That's what I think. Now, I've got to hurry along. So we've done our mission here. We delivered the letter, picked up ourselves a nice TM, and now we can head out of the cave and Mr. Briny can take us onward to Slateport City. Once we get a nice little heal up, though. So, the next city does not have a gym in it, so we don't need to worry about grinding up for that, but I think the city afterwards does have a gym, so there'll be a grinding montage eventually, once we get to there. But, let's go ahead and heal up first, then talk to Mr. Briny. <clears throat> so I am considering adding this particular, you know, the Alolan Executor. It's got me to thinking. They still haven't shown us if there is an Alola form for Execute, right? Now, given the fact that we've seen the full Alola forms, or the Alola forms for the full evolutions of Vulpix, Sandshrew, and Rattata now, it makes me think, there are going to be Alola forms for, say, Cubone, Execute, Persian, all the other Pokémon that we've seen only one, ev ev or sorry, one evolutionary stage of an Alola form. Ahoy! For you, I'll go out to sea anytime! Now, my friend, where are we bound? I'm not sure if that's the voice I gave you, but I'm sick. Let's go to Slateport! Slateport, is it? Anchors away! Pico, we're setting sail, my darling! Off we go to Slateport City. So, I'm picturing... Now, somebody was mentioning to me that it's been confirmed that regular Execute evolves into Executor. Now, if anyone out there can help me out with that, if you can tell me if it has been confirmed, whereabouts it has been confirmed at, because I have not seen it myself. The only possible implication of the confirmation was from some of the Japanese trailers where it shows Execute start to evolve, and then you see Alolan Executor finish evolving. But when I watch that footage, I notice there's a distinct jump cut from the beginning of Executor or Execute's evolution to jumping into the ending of Executor's evolution. Now, if the evolution is the same as it is in current generations, which I think it is, it looks pretty much the same, there's no telltale, like, you know, poof of sparkles when the evolution completes and then we see the new form. I think that the Japanese footage has purposely spliced together standard executor, sorry, standard execute and a lowland executor, those evolutionary footages, just to hide the appearance of a lowland execute. That's my belief. I don't know for sure, of course, but I want to believe that there's going to be an Alola form of execute. Ahoy! We've made land in Slateport! I suppose you're going to visit Captain Stern and deliver the Devon goods? Thanks for the reminder, sir. In case I didn't know what I was doing, I do now know. <clears throat> so there's some trainers, of course, we'll deal with. I've laid anchor in ports around the world, but Slateport's the best! So, I picture if there is an Alola form for Execute, for some reason, now, my first thought is, I'm, uh, if it is going to be like, if, you know, let me start that again. If there is an Alola form for Execute, is it going to be Grass Dragon as well, like Executor? And if so, is it going to, like, what, you know, what's it going to look like? Now, I have an image in my head that's going to look like a bunch of dragon fruit, maybe? I don't know. Like, it seems to, you know, play up the idea of dragon, of course. You leered my defense down. But we are a light. That was a critical hit, too. I think we're good. So, <clears throat> the idea is it could be like, you know, possibly like a bunch of dragon fruit. I wonder if it might just be like a bunch of coconuts, too. That could be a thing. And, I don't know. I really hope there are Alola forms for the other stage. I'd like to see what an Alolan Cubone looks like. And I had this random thought. What if... Okay, first of all, let me back this up a bit. Um, Cubone. What, one sec. You're the best. Let me deal with this guy first and I'll try to get my train of thought back on track. And the best port was the best trainer. That's me! We've got two trainers here, or not. 
Our sandcastle's taken a long time to make. In about four more generations, it's gonna come to life. He didn't say that, I added that. You can have this. That's gonna power ground type moves. Excellent, you know what? Would Skippy like that? I don't think the Quick Claws are gonna be that useful, but adding some more power to our ground type should be a good idea. Now, I could give it to Burrow, but he doesn't have a ground attack just yet. So, Skippy, you can take the Soft Sand. We'll give Bukemon the Quick Claw. Let's do that, because uh, Bukemon's not that fast either. So, back on track. What was I saying about the different evolutionary forms, I think? I'm thirsty. I could go for a soda pop at the Seashore House. I almost said Seahorse House. I guess it's the same letters, though. Anyway, we have Tuber Ricky, one Pokemon. Zigzagoon. <coughs> So what was I talking about as far as the different forms? What? That's unexpected. But we survived it. Alright. We get a knockout. I didn't even really pay attention to the level at that point. I was when I saw Surf, I was like, is this the mistake I'm gonna make in this episode? No, it's not. Look at the levels of the experience we're getting. Grown! I'm getting famished. My inner tube looks like a giant donut. You look like a giant donut. Anyway, let's go ahead and heal up. What was I talking about? I can't even think straight with my brain being all conflubbered with this cold. Let me take one moment and stop here. I was talking about... Whoa! Cubone. Now, <clears throat> Cubone is said to wear the skull of its dead mother on its head. Pokemon at the same level may not always have identical stats. Pokemon raised by trainers are stronger than wild Pokemon. Yep. Stop talking to me, people. I want to talk about Cubone. Doesn't a beach umbrella look like a giant flower? No. All right, let's battle. Actually, sometimes it does. So, Cubone is said to wear the skull of its dead mother. Marowak doesn't look like it's wearing a skull. I believe the, the head of Marowak is just its head. You're a normal type. You would think it's water type because of Meryl, of course, but for some reason, Azuril is a normal type. But anyway, when Cubone evolves into Marowak, I believe its head, like it takes the skull off, for example, or maybe just kind of breaks out of it, and I believe its head becomes that skull shape, right? So I don't think it's a helmet exactly, I think it's its standard natural head. Why would you slow me down? Let's just tackle. I knew you were going to be faster this time, but... That being said, so we've seen Alolan Marowak, and of course, for the most part it looks the same, its head is the same kind of shape and everything. If it is wearing a helmet, it's got the same kind of helmet. I had a random thought. What if... Pokemon wants to learn Vital Throw? That could be possible. I think... I don't really rely on Focus Energy. Let's get rid of that. So, what if Alolan Cubone doesn't wear the skull? And we finally get to see its face. Now, I've seen this thing someone's been sharing online where it's just fan art, but it shows Cubone. Let's try the new Vital Throw. Oh, I feel bad now. All it did was splash. But anyway, I saw fan art for a Pokemon Go card or something like that where it shows Cubone lifting up the skull and you can see its face. Of course, it's only fan art, so therefore it's not confirmed or anything like that, but it basically looks like a smaller version of the skull in, you know, living form. Mommy! She can't help you now, kid. I'm sorry, that was the cold talking. If you look at the beach from the sky, it looks like a big flower garden. Suppose it might. Let's go ahead and potion up. Pokemon's getting some good experience here. I like this. I was concerned he might be a little bit under leveled, and he kind of technically is, but goo goo? Absolutely. The water around these parts is clean, but I get my zigzagoon to pick up litter from the shoreline at times. Dirty water becomes rain and joins our rivers, which we drink from. Yeah, I was gonna say thanks, sir, but no, he's actually like this is true. Can't really get around that. If we pollute the sea, it all comes back to haunt us eventually. Which is why when they talk about Grimer and such in polluted waterways, think about that when you're drinking a nice bottle of your uh, precious bottled water. Are you a trainer? You're sitting on a beach chair, though. <coughs> Battle with me? Sure. You sound like a little bit sick, too. But anyways, I was talking about Cubone. Now, it'd be kind of cool if we do get to see... You're going to have a flag type attack. Are you... Excuse me. Are you not? Let's switch into... Our only Pokemon not weak to flying. I don't think you would have it at this point, but we're gonna find out. Anyways, I went into my Pokemon that really can't do anything to Wingle. Now that's clever Pokemon strategy right there. But you can growl all you like and use my water gun. We are seven levels above, we can at least probably get some decent damage. I think you're specially defensive. No, not really. But, I've lost my train of thought again. 
Cubone, basically. It'd be cool if we get to see an Alolan form of Cubone not wearing the skull. But who knows if it's going to happen, if there is going to be an Alolan form of Cubone. But the only trailer that I did see regarding the pre-evolutions of these new Alola forms and their evolutions... Stop with all the Wengal. It, they all kind of follow the same thing. You, you see the basic form start to evolve. You don't see the poof and sparkles of the uh, evolution happening, but then you see the ending animation of the Alola form finishing its evolution. So, all that being said, I think they just want to keep some surprises in the game, because like, if they showed us, for example, if there was an Alolan Pikachu, and if they showed us ahead of time, that would be cool. But what if you're playing through the game, Sun or Moon, and you come across a Pikachu in the wall, but it has that different Alola form to it that we've never seen yet? Imagine how much that's going to blow your mind. You're going to be like, where did that come from? Like, what is this thing? Now, since they did Growlithe a few times, I don't think... I'm going to try the Mud Shot. We have the Soft Sand. How much are we going to do to this Mud Shot? Not as much as I would have liked. Not as much as I would have liked to. <laughs> Alright, that hardly does anything to you. Let's Water Gun away. So... I'm hoping, well, I know that they're not going to show us every Alola form just yet, and what if they have hidden Alola forms of Johto and Hoenn and Sinnoh Pokemon that we haven't even seen yet? They've only shown Kanto, of course. Level 20 for Skippy, trying to learn Foresight. <coughs> hmm. I like Foresight. Do I want to replace anything I have? Hmm. Mud Slap is useful. Mud Shot, eh. I still like Growl. Growl comes in handy, and I said before, people kind of look down on moves like that, where it's like not really offensive, but it, it saves you, you know, it can lower the attack stat. I'm gonna get rid of Mud Slap. I do have Sand Attack on Burrow, plus Sand Attack will hit Flying types and Levitate Pokemon, whereas Mud Slap will not. And if we have anybody using any double teams, or what have you, I can go ahead and Foresight. Or... Ugh, ugh. <laughs> That's enough. You're making me sick, sir. Well, I'm already sick, but... I'm usually stronger than this. I'm just seasick as a dog. I'm a sailor, but... But nothing. Get in shape, sir. The Seahorse House. May hot battles rage on hot sand. It's a place for hot trainers. I did purposely read that wrong, just so you know. Yo, trainers! Whether you're a hot trot, cool cat or not... Or cool cat not... Chill at my papa spot! That I misread unintentionally. I'm giving you the, uh, the best of both worlds here. You don't battle me? Faker! Boring battles aren't worth the effort. Fiery hot battles are what toughen up trainers and Pokemon. You got fire types? I got water types. Technically with Shelver, but I don't use them. You've got a single Pokemon. Johanna sends in the fiery hot Goldeen. You can have Peck. I could have Skippy. I was going to go for the Arm Thrust, but... Now, I'm sure we'd survive a Peck. There's the Peck. Nah, I didn't want to actually take damage if I could help it, though. Let's go ahead and Mud Shot. I knew I was going to miss the first time I got rid of Mud Slap. Something told me I was going to miss that first one. Now, something didn't tell me I was going to miss the second one, which we didn't do, so it all works out well. My Psychic Premonition is working. Maybe being sick gives me Psychic Powers. More than likely not, though. For example, I didn't know Pokemon was going to hit level 14 there. That's hot! I guess so. We both use Water Pokemon, but okay. Whew, I'm all thirsty. Maybe I'll have a soda pop. You know what? That sounds like an idea. I'm the owner of the Seahorse House, but you can call me Mr. C. What I love about all, what I love above all, is to see hot Pokemon battles. Let me see that your heart burns hot. If you can defeat all the trainers here, I'll reward your efforts. All two of them? Wait, there's a kid in the corner. I didn't see you. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm dying here. I'm going to show you how great my Pokemon are, but don't cry. I will try my best to not fulfill... No, to fulfill your wishes to not cry. Simon sends in a normal type. I send in Makuhita. Arm Thrust. Arm Thrust is fully accurate too, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. If not, I got Vital Throw, but of course it does go last. So if we can land a hit first, I'm going to try and do that. Look, Pokemon's almost caught up. Well, not quite. Uh, Burrow is level 17 right now, I believe. You are not a normal type. Let's go for a Vile Throw. You don't have any fairy moves yet, because they don't exist, of course. And you're not a fairy type yet, because as I just indicated a moment ago, they do not exist. Tackle! Vile Throw. Go away! Meryl Yo. I'm trying for a little bit of a rhyme there. I, I, technically, I got it. I lost, but I won't cry. Good, neither of us will then. Perfect. If one of my Pokemon knew the move for carrying me across water on its back, I could get rid of this inner tube. But why would you? You're so stylish. 
Last Trainer. If you're looking for a battle on the high seas, you'll find no hotter trainer than me, matey. I guess that's why they're talking about hot battles, despite the fact that most everyone here is water Pokemon. I'm gonna say you probably do as well. There we go. Huh. You do not indicate to have any flying type attacks. Let's tackle. Will this be the mistake that I'm fearing of making in this playthrough for today's episode? No. I don't think so. So there's a speed tie happening here, folks. That hurt. Let's go ahead and not make a mistake. Let's potion up our Makuhita. Almost back to full. What do you go for? We're switching. I believe at this point... Well, I was going to say... No, I was going to say uh, Burrow could get the KO, but... He's weak to water attack, so we're not playing that game. We're sending in our not resistant, but neutrality to the water attacks. In Skippy, the Marsh Stomp, going for our own water gun. It's too bad Foresight doesn't make it so any attack will hit any type, because I can Foresight this Pokemon and then go for Mud Shots. Unfortunately, that is not the case. And Smackdown is not a move that happens until, I think, at least the fifth generation. Mud Shot. You, we can Mud Shot. There we go. So, we should be able to finish up this trainer and grab ourselves a Soda Pop, and I think I'm going to try to run to the Pokemon Center quickly in Slateport, which should end off the episode nicely. And if so, I've managed to survive the episode without coughing up a storm, which I was concerned might happen where I didn't have any water with me to uh, ease the throat. I do need to go get some juice, like, I, you know, just stuff to take care of myself. That was a hot battle! I can accept that loss, matey! You're going to have to, so I'm glad you can. Whenever I'm in Slateport, I enjoy hot battles and ice-cold soda pop. In fact, you know what? Forget the juice. I can use soda pop. That'll heal me up, right? You're scorching hot. Those battles blaze. I'm more than just satisfied. As thanks for showing me your hot streak, I want you to take these. It's a half dozen bottles of soda pop. Thank you. Those heal up 60 HP. Want to buy some soda pop? Pokemon love it. Nah, we got enough. You gave me some free samples. I like that. So let's quickly rush up into Slateport City. I think I've dealt with all the trainers down here. And the Pokemon Center is not too far away. And in tomorrow's episode, we will check out what's going on over there, but I'm not ready for that just yet. We're going to check out... Where the... Where the... Where is the Pokemon Center? Oh, there we go. Get in there. There we go. We're going to heal up. We're going to save it up. I want to say thank you, everybody, for watching today's episode. And feel free to leave some comments down below, not only regarding what you saw in the episode and what you liked and what you're looking forward to in the future, but some well wishes, perhaps, for me to get a speedy recovery and hopefully not have to delay too many things this week as far as the uh, video content goes. The news update, like I said, at least delayed until tomorrow. If I can feel, like, if I, you know, heal up good enough for the rest of the day, I can get that recorded for tomorrow and upload it and talk about the all the news stuff. I do want to address the possible concerns I have regarding the Pokemon Moon playthrough, but I don't want to scare anybody. I'm still planning to do it. There's just some things that might kind of change things up from what I'm considering the way to do it. Anyway, that being said, I'm hoping that the TCG video won't be delayed, if at all, by too much. Stadium should still be on par for the weekend, and I'm going to try to get one episode of Silver, not Silver, Sapphire, recorded for the entire day, or for the entire week every day. This is taxing the brain and the speech box. I think I'm going to end it off here. But I want to say, once again, thanks for checking out today's episode. Professor Chaz is now signing off, and I'll catch you next time.